So every day we, we see people in most of our lives or jobs, maybe a little less now than in previous years, but generally speaking, we, we encounter people. We meet people, we see people. And we've, I was talking yesterday to uh, Maura, who, who, who works here. She was at home, so we had to arrange something, so I gave her a shout. And she was talking to me about something rather serious, about NFP, actually, natural family planning, actually, while feeding her little son, Samuel. So, you know, it's kind of a serious enough conversation where you can find practitioners and numbers. And, and in, the mean, in the background, you can kind of hear him <laughs> as Samuel is spitting back out what she's saying. Samuel, Samuel, hold on. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel stop, stop being so dramatic now. And then she'd feed him again. You know, and then she'd say, yes, so if you call this number here, they're very good and they're very practical. They'll sort of, <laughs> Samuel, hold Right? And then you can hear him go, <laughs> as, he, as he giggles, right? So he's spitting food all over the place. And I can imagine, I can imagine the scene. Like there's more food on his bib and on his face than actually went into his digestive tract. Um, but he was enjoy obviously enjoying it, right? Really enjoying this meal, even though he wasn't eating much of it at all. Okay? And how does, or how did, Maura gaze upon her son? Right? When, when you love someone... When you, when you look at them, you might have had this experience yourself of looking at someone, seeing someone you love. In a way, they can do no wrong, right? Oh my goodness, look at her. She dropped her school bag and her books went everywhere. Be still my beating heart. You know, or, <laughs> you know when you see someone that you love, they can do, they can do no wrong. Do you know, it's, oh look, he's got 14 toes. Oh, wow. You know, and... And it's, 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 it's all like, they, but then there's another extreme where someone is looking at someone else and that person can do no right. You know what I mean? Oh, look at them, they're perfect. Ah, get 100% in the test, woo. You know, you can do no right, no matter what you do, it's, it's wrong. I mean, even, I remember Anita actually telling her, giving her testimony here. And she, she went through a, an experience of bullying at school where if she wasn't wearing makeup, she, she looked like a slob, and if she was wearing makeup, she was trying too hard. And this, this bullying scenario just meant that she was just never enough, no matter what she did. It was too much, too little, but never right. Okay? So we can be looked on by people in a way that, that we can do no wrong, or we can be looked on by people in a way that we can actually do no right, or we can also be looked at by people who hardly notice you at all. They see you, but it's like when you're walking in a city. This is kind of city life. When you're walking on a city, when you're on a footpath, people walking against you are obstacles that you have to avoid as opposed to people that you encounter because you have to walk around them or you bump into them, which is kind of embarrassing. So these are, it's kind of like a computer game. It's like you have to dodge all these, oh, buggy, woo, it's a big one. Okay, you know, so people and Trash cans are the same thing. You just have to dodge them as you're, as you're walking along. Okay, so you're, people see you, but not as, a, not as a person, more as an obstacle. Okay. How does God see us? How are we seen by God? Because I was thinking this morning how God sees us but it's just it's so almost dangerous for us to think of of that him of him seeing us in the wrong light because i think it's very easy to slip into this mentality that god is kind of spying us he's watching us he's kind of stalking us so yes he sees but like this kind of like the santa claus uh thing he sees when you've been sleeping he knows when you're awake he knows if you've been bad or good so be good or you'll burn <laughs> Okay, you see, that's, that's, that's not going to be a healthy way of seeing God at all. So God, God does see everything, but he's not stalking us either. So how does this work? Well, I think it's like back to that, that first example. He, he sees us as his beloved children. So unlike maybe a, a, a gooey-eyed lover, when you, when you look at someone and they can do no wrong, uh, the Lord knows that we can do wrong. But he has this a such objective way of looking at us and seeing that, yes, that they're, they're not perfect, but I love them anyway. And I know what they're capable of. I know the good that they're capable of, even more than they do. So we're, we're, we're seen. We are seen. 
constantly. We're noticed. We're not stalked. We're not kind of watched like a prison guard uh, does his laps of the, the prisoners below doing their exercise. That, that's not God. We're noticed. We're in his gaze and we're loved. But he, he knows us from here. Like he, knows us, he knows our hearts. He knows us from, from the inside out. And it's a, I think that's, that's a very important way of, of living our relationship with God to, to know that he, he does see. Because if we're going to live our lives with this uh, idea of, you know, it's enough that God sees me or for like doing everything for the audience of one, there might be a, a danger that, that deep down, I, I'm not even sure if, he, I'm not sure if he sees me at all. You know, when people are attention seeking, it can happen, it can happen to anyone, you know, uh, Children maybe are a little more prone to it, uh, but where you just you just want to be seen, uh, so you're you know you come home from from school with your your test on a Friday and say mammy 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 look what I got in my test got gold star the gold star there gold star so I got gold star. and you want you want people to see you aren't you very good now you're 17 so I think you really have to get over the whole gold star thing right so but like you, you want you know when you get a medal you know you want people you want people to see you want people to know like you don't want to be kind of hey i got a medal but you kind of want people to notice at the same time you know it's it's normal enough i think for us to want to be seen because deep down that comes from the, the desire to be loved we want to be loved we have we're created for love so this is natural and normal that i want to love and I want to be loved. It's generally the motivation for most of the things that we do, even going to the gym, dressing up, putting on makeup. You want to be loved and you want to love someone. Okay. Uh, so it motivates so much of what we do. But do I feel I have to win God's attention? Or do I feel that I only have his attention when I'm in here? I think that's, that's another difficulty or problem. People maybe only think that God sees them when they're in the church, so he only sees me for that 30 minutes, 45 minutes a week, and the rest of the time he doesn't really see or maybe he doesn't really care. We're like obstacles on a footpath. But that's not the truth. So we're, we're, we're gazed upon by, remember, as, as Jesus calls God um, numerous times, at, at least twice, but refers to him uh, under that title and numerous other times in this this, this uh, John chapter 6, calls God Father. So God gazes on us as a father gazes on his beloved children. So it's, as I say, it's not a gooey-eyed romantic, he can do no wrong, but it's not the other extreme either, where I'm waiting for him to get something wrong. We're not seen either as, as just, it's, this is his duty, I've created them, I suppose I better check up on them, see what they're doing. He has created us out of love and for love. And so we're constantly in his gaze. We're not being watched. We're being noticed. We're being held in existence by our Father who loves us. So today we, as we delve ever more deeply into this, these Gospels on the Eucharist, the bread of life, the presence of Jesus in every Holy Communion, let us be reminded that the that God does this because he wishes to live within us, see his son within us. That we are under his gaze at all times. And he's there urging us on, giving us the grace to be the best that we can be and to be the saints that he's calling us to be. Amen.